Victor's shocking revelation, Jordan alive and arsonist, Claire's role unveiled. Plus, Tucker's reign of drama in Genoa City sparks backlash. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day, after watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Jordan is Victor's bait, and Claire delivers the message. The Young and the Restless Spoilers recap for Wednesday, February 14, reveals that Victor Newman will get off a phone call and divulge some worrisome news to Nikki Newman. Victor will say that Jordan wasn't one of the dead prisoners after he admits that the prison fire was caused by arson. Jordan was one of the escaped survivors, based on which Nikki will conclude that a trap needs to be set. Victor will insist that Nikki stay at the ranch and won't allow her to offer herself as bait. Lauren Fenmore Baldwin will join Nikki after Victor leaves for work to receive information on the projects Audra Charles was working on. On Wednesday's Y&R episode, Nikki will provide Lauren the most recent information about Jordan when she feels like she's having a tough morning. Lauren will give Nikki some advice on not allowing herself to be frightened, but she will also empathize because she has dealt with Sheila Carter's threat numerous times. Since Nikki will be positive it was Jordan, she will choose to give the unknown number that played the stripper music another call. Nikki will launch into a tirade about how she doesn't feel ashamed of the song and that it's an anthem to honor Jordan's loss once the other person answers the phone. Nikki will hope that Jordan breaks into the ranch and provides her an opportunity to cross the line in revenge after she starts acting like Jordan is a coward for not responding to her. Nikki's resistance to Jordan will impress Lauren, who will advise Nikki not to answer Jordan's follow-up contact as Nikki has already spoken her opinion. Sally Spectra and Chloe Mitchell will talk about how they don't have any new clients lined up at Crimson Lights. The survival of the interior design company will therefore be in doubt, but Sally will turn down Chloe's suggestion to approach Nick Newman for a second loan. Chloe will propose maybe they might add a more established partner instead, but Sally will struggle with the prospect of giving up any power. Nick and Adam Newman are waiting for Victor to arrive to Newman Enterprises for a critical meeting. Victor will enter before Adam gets a chance to speak with Nick about something. Victor will make a hint about setting himself up for a trap after breaking the news about the arson and Jordan's verified escape. Adam will want to help Victor in any way he can, and Nick will also want to help, even though he won't be happy with Victor's hazy plan. Nick will chastise Adam after Victor leaves for jumping into the project too quickly without knowing all the information, but Adam will believe that they must be helpful in order to keep an eye on the situation and keep Victor safe. Adam will acknowledge that it has to do with Sally and what he wanted to talk about earlier. Adam want to run something past Nick prior to presenting his idea to Victor. If Adam is going to ask Sally to marry him, Nick will say that he doesn't care. Adam will explain that, given Sally's troubled design firm and her refusal to ask Nick for more money, this is a business matter. Once, Victor promised to set up a design division for Sally under the Newman Company, but he later broke the agreement. Adam will be adamant it was bad and believe Victor ought to fix it. Nick won't believe Victor will concur, but Adam will need Nick's assistance in persuading their father to accept the proposal. Claire Grace will converse about Athena and Greek mythology with a giddy young girl named Nadia in her room on the insane unit. Before Claire recognizes her, Victoria Newman, Amelia Heinley, will be watching from the doorway. Nadia, who met Claire during one of her pediatric wing walks, has clearance to visit Claire. When an orderly returns Nadia to her own room, Victoria will be amazed at Claire's talent with kids. Claire acknowledges that, having not experienced a true childhood, she is also astonished. But Claire will enjoy spending time with the children and find it more therapeutic than her demanding therapy sessions. Victoria will be happy to hear that Claire appreciates her books and that she looks forward to her visits, as Claire would readily confess. Victoria will appear concerned and decide to stay when Victor arrives and requests to meet with Claire alone. After learning of the verified arson, 
Claire and Victoria will be reassured that Jordan did, in fact, start the fire and that she should be taken to be dead. Instead, Victor will insist that they resume their search for Jordan and enlist Claire's assistance in locating any hints as to where or what Jordan might do. Claire won't respond, but she will acknowledge that Jordan pretended to be Victoria when he called her on a cell phone that was being smuggled in order to get her to talk. Victor and Victoria will be concerned because they haven't heard about this until now, but Claire will reassure them that she firmly cut off communication with Jordan and deleted the exchange from her memory. Victor will eventually tell Claire to call him Victor rather than Mr. Newman because they are now family. Since he anticipates Claire reaching out once more, Victor will also want Claire to relay a message to Jordan. Claire agrees to deliver the message if Jordan calls after Victor tells him to tell Jordan that he's willing to make amends for the hurt that he caused Jordan's sister, Eve Howard. Victor will know that Victoria worries in secret that her daughter might experience a setback, but he will make it plain that Nikki is the one he is more concerned about than Claire. Once Victor is gone, Claire will offer confidence to Victoria since she won't be terrified of Jordan and will want to help stop her for good. Stay tuned for more shocks from Jordan, according to teasers for The Young and the Restless. The next update for today. Is Y and R's Tucker too much? Has Airtime Hog taken over Genoa City? Spoilers for The Young and the Restless indicate that Tucker McCall has planned a number of takeovers of companies, but many fans believe he's really taking over the entire program. Many fans have been criticizing Tucker on social media for hogging airtime. Is Tucker featured on YNR too much? Given how several narratives Tucker is involved in, it's a point worth making. Tucker tries to sell his love for Audra Charles when he's not having arguments with Ashley Abbott and other locals. Tucker is attempting to prepare for Glissade's future when he isn't handling a previous PR disaster. Fans must also put up with Ashley's incessant brooding about the Paris explosion, additionally, the Abbots are concerned about the emotional toll that all of this is having on Ashley, not to mention Tucker's ongoing threat against Jabot. Additionally, Billy Abbott and Devin Hamilton Winters are on high alert at Chancellor Winters because they think Tucker may cause more problems. Tucker's web continues to worry Nate Hastings about Audra becoming entangled in it, and Abby Newman Abbott has also found herself in a number of similar situations. Regardless of whether Tucker is truly on screen or just the subject of other characters' constant chatter, there is no doubting that there is an incredible amount of Tucker. The true issue, of course, is that Tucker never takes any significant action. If Tucker was this incredible supervillain who truly carried out devious schemes, things may be different. Rather, the majority of Tucker's schemes are complete failures or, at the very least, ultimately meaningless. Why is Tucker so untrustworthy when he consistently falls short of his objectives? YNR likes to play up Tucker's manipulating side like he's the big evil wolf, but they won't let him actually do anything too horrific. The authors wouldn't even permit Tucker to physically hurl a glass or swoop a chair, if the growing body of information about what transpired at the Paris Café is accurate. As it turns out, it was all in Ashley's imagination, thus Tucker is just another uninspired villain. Although we understand that certain people are gray, Tucker still seems overly vague. Perhaps the show should take a stand on Tucker's character or drastically cut down on his airtime. According to spoilers for The Young and the Restless, Tucker has a lot more to come in the meantime. Stay tuned for information on his upcoming chapter and any impending major announcements. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.